some people might look at it like, oh, this guy's just lucky. He got, he got this brand, and, and, but it's like, you got to work, you know? And I think anybody that has that determination, like for me, I looked at it like, I'm either going to do this or I'm going to have to work for some company that I don't like for the rest of my life. Change is inedible. Like every, every success happens because you change something and, you, and you, it was a fear that was within you. Motivation only lasts for a short amount of time but discipline is what carries you forward. I can't do this on my own, period. Are you looking at your business in terms of emotion or are you looking at your business in terms of what's practical? I still believe that America is the best country in the world. Where can kid of immigrants with no education become a physician? This is Small Business Celebration, where we're celebrating small businesses for big breakthroughs. Hello Visioneers and welcome to Small Business Celebration. We got another fantastic episode. We're going to be talking about seasonal expenses. We're going to be talking about increasing your visibility and we're also got the Visioneer game as well. And we're here in Morro Bay. Yes, we left the confines of the San Joaquin Valley to bring you another special episode. And our guest this week is Mike Jones, the owner of As High As I Am. Welcome to Small Business Celebration. Yeah, thanks for having me. For visioners who don't know who you are, who are you and what is it that you do? My name is Mike Jones. Uh, I own a clothing brand here in Morro Bay and it's pronounced as high as I am, which uh, we market that as anything to do with flying or catching air. So we do a lot of surfing, skating, stuff like that. How did you get involved with this whole thing? Because you've been doing this for 20 years? Yeah, a little over 20 years, yep. Yeah. Um, I started doing stickers when I was going to Cal Poly. Right. And that's what initially started it. I wasn't planning on doing a brand. I was getting my psych degree and mm. thought, oh, I'm going to get my doctorate and, you know, go through that whole right, thing. Right. So I was just having fun with it. I really like to catch air surfing. So for me and my friends that like to do airs, it was kind of like a, a thing where I was like, oh, you know, this is our deal. And right. once I realized people that, you know, mountain bikers were like, but I catch air on my mountain bike too. It's, it, is it just surfing? I'm like, no, it could be mountain biking. And, <laughs> sure. and then rock climbers and base jumpers and kiteboarders. And everybody's like, I do this. Is that as high as I am? And I was like, I guess. Like, <laughs> do you think it's as high as I am? So for me, I was like, wow, all these people, because I did stickers for a couple of years, they already had an idea of what it was for right. them. For me, I still wasn't planning on doing a brand or anything, but right. over time, just the people were asking, like, I want a hat, though. I want a shirt that says it. And I was like, I don't know how to do that. Um, <laughs> you know, and just thinking of school and all that. And right. once I graduated, I was making, like, minimum wage. And out looking at my check after taxes, I was like, man, I got to try this uh, as high as I am thing out before I keep going with school or trying to follow this path. So I quit my job, started spray painting hats and T-shirts and and uh, the rest 20, is all 20 years history. later yeah here I am just still sitting here and this is not your first location because you started this business by working out of your van well basically at my house when I started printing stuff I had a little right. shed in the backyard and started right. printing at first I guess it was in my room then I moved out to a little shed and okay then, then I'd have my van with the products that I had like go down to the rock and hang out and um, but mostly like my friends would just take everything for free. So I wasn't, wasn't really selling everything. And it was kind of an expensive uh, hobby at that point. At what point did it become a business and not a hobby? Yeah, well over time I, I was realizing that my friends, I can't just have stuff in my car or in my room. You know, it's real hard to like charge somebody when they're in your bedroom. Right. Um, and you're, they're your good friend and they're like, just hook me up, dude. Like <laughs> I realized I'm like, I have to have a place where I have this stuff that's not my room or not my car. And so I ended up, it was 2003, August 2003, I rented a little 400 square foot spot in Los Osos. Right. Right on the main drag and just moved my screen printing gear in the back 200 square feet and then the front of the 200 square feet was the shop. And um, yeah, I did three years there and that was the start of it. And then you moved here to this location and visioneers, if you hear the door chiming or you see or hear customers talking in the background, it's because the business is open and you've got a great location. Yeah, it's not bad. And you do more than just stickers. You've grown into hats and other kinds of apparel, but you also rent things for the day user. We do. Yeah, we have all kind of moving down to this spot being by the water mm -hmm. and, um, you know, so close to the beach, I think we, uh, how's it going guys? I think we decided, you know, we realized like, oh, we have to be kind of, people are asking for it. So we just started kind of doing the rentals and stuff. And what kind of rentals do you provide? Do you like surfboards, wetsuits, uh, skim boards, boogie boards, all that stuff? Of course, you've got all the stickers. Yeah. You've, you've also got them on skateboards, you've got them on hats, you've got them on shirts, you've got them on all kinds of apparel. You've got them on surfboards. 
What don't you have stickers on? Uh, <laughs> well, I need to get, I do want to get a few other like products, like maybe some sunglasses and um, <laughs> stuff like that. So, and I'll help them out real sure, quick. So. Have enough. you guys been in the shop before? Okay, just so you guys know about the shop, uh, we do like a local brand from Morro Bay here. It's pronounced as high as I am, that's how you say the name. Oh. And as high as I am, uh, we mark it as anything to do with flying or catching air. So we do a lot of surf and skate, uh, some motocross, stuff like that. Oh, nice. Yeah, and if you guys have questions, we're just doing a little interview, uh, just feel free to holler. Okay, all right, thanks guys. That's the life of a business owner. Yeah. You, you, you never get any time off. It's a mellow Sunday morning, so it's good good time to do this, but yeah. But you're gearing up for the for the season when it's 110 in the San Joaquin Valley and everybody right. migrates. Yeah, yeah. Everything I'm doing right now is kind of looking forward to the busy summer. What are some of the things that you're setting up for? Just getting my ordering done, mm. and uh, you know, we're obviously pretty packed in here, so I'm, it's really it's actually harder to order because I'm like I don't know what I have room for. <laughs> sure. So I have to, uh, you know, kind of, I've been organizing space. Right. I've been doing some space management, trying to figure out how much room I have to be able to buy stuff. And now that we're getting into the holiday season, it's time to get out of your house. And if you don't like the house that you're in, might I suggest you buy a new one for Mike Seba, a Zillow Premier agent with Watson Realty, born and raised and never left Bakersfield. Give Mike Seba a call at 661-203-8406 or email him at MikeSaba1 at iCloud.com today. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> And Mike Saba is the sponsor of our Visioneer question. And Visioneer Bree asks, we are trying to increase the visibility of our business. How do you create something people want to be part of? Oh, man. You know, I think everybody's kind of longing for something to, to um, you know, to represent them and their mm -hmm. lifestyle and what right. they do. And uh, what I realized, like, I didn't really do it on purpose, but as high as I am kind of fills that, ni that niche. And How so? Just where, like, if you see somebody wearing it, you know, you kind of feel connected to Morro Bay, or um, it's almost like, because we only sell it out of here, really. We do right. it um, a little bit online, so when you see as high as I am out in the wild, you're like, oh, I know where you got that. Or, sure. Um, so I feel like, just from what I've heard from people, you know, they're like, I was in this place and this place, and I saw somebody wearing it, or, um, you know, so it just makes them feel like they have a connection. I feel, that's how I feel. Right. And, um your stickers are everywhere. That's what I realized right off the bat. I did my first, the way I really started the company was I got a promotion on an email that said 20, 20 bucks, 250 stickers postpaid. Right. And I was like, 20 bucks for a stick, 250 stickers. What, what could I do, you know? And <laughs> right. I'd written as high as I am in a doodle book uh, at my house. And it's, you know, something people would come over and look at the whole doodle book and they'd always stop and ask what as high as I am said. So. Um, I was like, oh, I'll try that as high as I am word because people seem to like that. And you also mentioned that you started getting feedback from other kinds of sport interest groups yeah. about this. Is has I am, does it apply to me? That's key. I did the stickers for two years, just handing them out, block chunks of stickers. Just right. get them out of here, go, go. And right. um, so when I started making clothes, it was like, whoa, what am I doing? What is this? What do, you know, how do I define this? And right. I didn't want it to be like a 420 thing. I was in my head, right. I was like, I want to, I want my kids or I want to be able to sponsor kids. And right, you don't want to be associated with the whole marijuana yeah, thing. I yeah, I kind of yeah. wanted to focus on, you know, I like to catch air surfing and that right. was my deal. But um, what, what I realized once I started making stuff, people were like, well, I look at it as, as high as I am on God or as high as I am this. And I'm right. like, I can't tell them it's not that. Right. If they feel like it's that for them. Right. So uh, my real thing is I just say it's whatever you want it to be. Um, you know, and I was a psych major, so I feel like the little endorphin as high as I am. Right. Uh, it kind of feeds that, um, that part of it too. You know, it's just like a little positive affirmation as high as I am, you know, it right. gives you a little... Now, I will be remiss if I don't ask you this, and you've probably been asked this a thousand times. A-Z? Yeah. I haven't been asked that. Really? No. Really? Uh -uh. So tell us why you chose as A-Z instead of A-S. Uh, I just liked the way it looked, I guess. With the, okay. the When I, I wrote it out, like I said, in a doodle book, it was just a thing that came out. I, I was in a band, and I was doing a bunch of lyric stuff, and it was right. just one of the words that I... And when I wrote it, I was like, oh, I'll do it with Z's, you know. And right. It just looked weird. It was a big differentiator for you. Yeah. So for me, it, and I, like I said in the beginning, I didn't, 
I got a kick out of it. I thought, right? oh, that's a, I like that word. Right. Didn't think like, oh, I'm going to do a company for my whole life with it. You <laughs> sure. know? I definitely wanted to try. I was like, oh, I don't, before I go work for somebody else my whole life, I have to at least try to do this. And uh, luckily, and um, with everybody's support, it's worked still. So. And that brings us to the Visioneer game. Now, if you're not familiar with the way the Visioneer game works, I have a random word generator here on my phone, and I have no idea what the word that's going to be generated is. More importantly, neither does our guest. And he has to take this word and somehow associate the word with his business. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Our first word is colorful. Mm. Colorful, okay. Well, colors are real important with uh, like a brand, I think. Right. You know? uh, typically people, a lot of people just do black and then we, so you kind of have to have that. It is a color, so you want to have right. uh, your items in black for those kind of people. But we do have a ton of hats that are try to get more the most colorful stuff I can. Right. Even in the wetsuit realm, you know, we get a lot of requests for more color. Right. In the wetsuits and stuff. So I think color is real important with, with the brand and having I mean, I just think your your clothes are they represent you, and I think a lot of people, especially this right now, right, seems like people like the color, right. You know, maybe right. more than more than uh, pre-COVID or something. I think you know. Well, well done. Congratulations. You got the first word right. Well yeah. done, you. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Our second word is conference. <laughs> well, having a shop. Right. With people coming in every day, it's almost like you're having a conference. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, you have. I, I meet with friends here. I meet with strangers. It's kind of like a daily conference. <laughs> well done on number two. Thanks. And the third word for all the marbles. Uh -oh. Are you ready? The third word is attraction. Oh huh. yeah, attraction. With uh, as high as I am, the attraction is you can't read it, <laughs> and it makes your makes your mind wonder what it says. <laughs> right. And uh, makes you ask. What does that say? It makes you look more closely. What and, does that And then when you find out it says as high as I am, that's usually the aha effect that people are like, oh my God, that does say as high as I am, you know? Perfect. Well, well done. Three out of three. Thank Congratulations. You. Well do done, I, you. Woohoo. You brought, you just won a brand new. No, you didn't. Come on, come on. I want a brand, <laughs> I want a brand new something. <laughs> you know, speaking of attraction, that's part of the appeal of what you have here is because you do have to look closely at the word and yep. you have to sit there and go, yeah, this is not normal. It's just weird how it all worked out because of circumstances and whatever. But right. um, if I could go back, I would be, I would have taken myself out of the printing game. Okay. And so had a, you know, just someone else print right. and uh, have them print with tags and stuff so that mm. I could you know, do wholesale and get it into other shops instead of me just focusing on my little deal, my shop. Um, but in saying that, it's it's worked out this way. Right. Doing it, and it's it's a it's a um, roundabout way to the same means, I guess. Right. So we're. Because are you doing a lot of wholesale now? No, none. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we we just sell it out of here. We do a little online. We don't really even advertise for online, but people find us and get right. and do stuff. But why would you have gone into the wholesale world instead of gone into the retail world? I just think that, um, you know, I have one shop, I, I could have 500 shops right oh, now in sure. 20 years. If I would have started like, you know, hitting up shops, I, I just, for me, I, I don't mind being here and doing what I do. And it, it just, just imagining like driving all over the place and um, having to maintain accounts kind of like didn't sound right to me. I right. think this is like really like laid back and easy. I don't have to leave my town. And right. so I like this model better, but if I could have started, sure, you know, I might have changed that. Like that, um, I think doing all the printing myself, doing all the, you know, everything yourself, right, isn't the way to run a a, a, a real fluid business. I guess, right, right. You right. know, you got to bring in the other people uh, that can do stuff better than what you can do, right, to uh, make it happen. And I'm doing more of that now. We have printers that are legit, and I'm like, oh, it's so nice, like. <laughs> Get three you can spend more time talking to the customer. Yeah, you get a few pallets of stuff that I'm, I didn't have to print that. I just put it put it on a shelf, grab it, and put it out. You know, it's way better than me like looking at a mountain of stuff and I, oh, I got to print all that and um, keep up with the demand. It's really hard. So right. yeah. 
And that's a great way of segueing into our next visionary question, which is brought to you by Mike Zaba, a Zillow Premier agent with Watson Realty, selling homes since 1992. Call him at 661-203-8406 or email Mike Zaba at mikezaba1 at icloud.com today. Visioneer Eric asks, our retail business is very seasonal. What have you done to even out the expenses of having to carry a lot of inventory? I mean, on that note, I think the main thing I do mm -hmm. is, you know, I get all my ordering done when I have the money, when it's busy. Oh, uh, okay. So I try to focus on, um, you know, how much I can spend, how much I'm going to need. Right. Um, just in case anything happens. We saw last year with all the um, rain and stuff. Right. Uh, where we were flooded out for like weeks on end. That it's like everything can come to a stop. You know, you right. have to still pay your bills and all that. So it, it basically, I, I, I've been lucky. I, you know, everything's paid for. I don't have any debt. So um, it's not a real crucial for me. I'm like, okay, I can make it through this season. Right. You know, I can make it through some months of hardships if right. I have to. And, I, and that's why I have this inventory that I have. So, I, like, during the slow times, I'm not uh, running lean or empty where I can't, you know, people are like, you don't have a large and right. this or something. I try to have it all through the whole season. You carry a lot of items that aren't dependent on this year to be sold. Right. You can go through and you can sell something next year or the year after if it just happens to be sitting on the shelf that long. Right. Well, you know, we order in bulk, so we do get a lot of stuff. Usually it's about 3,000 items on things that if I don't print it, you know, that's right. another reason why me printing still helps. Right. Uh, because you don't have enough room to house all these different logos at 3,000 pieces. Sure. Um, a lot of people don't understand. It's like, oh, you had these ones in here. It's like, oh, I bought 3,000 of those sweatshirts. <laughs> sure. You know? Right, right. Like it's going to take a little time to sell them. Um, but it's also a design choice. Yeah. And that's what's really important here is because... Yes, you have the same logo and you yeah. have the same catchword and it's absolutely wonderful. But the designs that you have chosen on your hats, on your shirts and everything else, they're not specific to this year only style. Yeah. How have you gone through and chosen that particular look? Uh, I just go through and get stuff that I think I would like or, you right. know, the girl stuff's really hard because I'm not a girl and right. I don't, my, my wife's always like, no, don't buy that. Don't do this. And sure. Right. I'm like, I don't know what to get. You know, um, it's, there's a few things that we got for the girls that are really, you know, certain tank tops or something. Um, but like for the guys, I'm just always looking for a more comfortable tee. Right. Um, the sweatshirts, you know, we, we, we try to get the best sweatshirts we can get. They're nice and well made. They're not going to fall apart and they, they feel like a, a good sweatshirt. So, you know, and whenever they come out with a new design or something like a new acid wash or some kind of new pattern, I try to pick that up and throw our, our logos on it too. So, It's no secret that we're in an economy right now where a lot of business owners are struggling. Yeah. Is the American dream debt? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. I think oh. there's a lot of opportunity out there for people that if you want to work hard and for me, I mean, people don't see the back end, but it's been like 20 years of pretty much seven days a week. Right. Um, you know, they come in, they're like, oh, that's why, you know, oh, give me a hat or something. It's like, I work for this, you know, you right. can give me, got to buy it, you know, and um, still with my friends, you know, I get even right. my, my family members, they're like, it's free. Look at all this stuff you got. <laughs> it's like, I'm all, I sit here every day to pay for it, you know. And, <laughs> right. Um, so for me, it's, it's, you know, some people might look at it like, oh, this guy's just lucky. He got, he got this brand, and, and, but it's like, you got to work, you know. And I think anybody that has that determination, like, for me, I looked at it like, I'm either going to do this or I'm going to have to work for some company that I don't like for the rest of my life, yeah. you know. And so I, I really, like, just put my head down and I did what people asked. You know, people wanted a shirt. I made a shirt. People wanted a hat. I made a hat. Uh, they wanted more stickers. I made more stickers, you know. So I listened to what people want and, um, and kind of go that route. And, like, I just take in advice like people like oh you know you only have these three color hats well okay well, I'll get more colorful different hat you know I try to just um, listen and accommodate the customer I guess Mike this has been a real privilege thank you for joining us here on oh, Small Business Celebration I was happy to be here thank you for uh, coming in you guys if visioners want to get in touch with you how do they do that well, we're located right here on the Embarcadero next to the Kite Store and the Parisian Bakery. And the address is 1140 Front Street, uh, Suite B in Morro Bay, California. Uh, phone number is 
0199. You can get a hold of us also at our email is info, info at as high as I am .com, or check us out on Instagram at as high as I am and our website is as high as I am .com. So it's pretty easy. And if you enjoy the Small Business Celebration, go ahead and like, subscribe, and notify, and I'll be right back with my final thought. Visioneers, do you know what the rock of any good website is? It's a blog! Yes, yeah, Small Business Celebration has a blog. Simply go to smallbusinesscelebration.com forward slash blog, get more information about the guests that appear on Small Business Celebration, and get more information to help you grow a strong and profitable business. So reach out to smallbusinesscelebration.com forward slash blog today. When the chair falls over. Recently, I watched an interview with Michael Caine, and he was talking about how, as an actor, what truly defines the character of an actor is when the unexpected happens on set. For example, if a chair falls over, what does he do? Well, if he's in a comedy, he trips over the chair, because it's, it's funny. Or if he's in a drama, he yells and smashes the chair for being there and being in his way. Or if he's in a tragedy, he cries and laments over the loss of how this chair fell over. But that got me to thinking, what about you and I? What happens to us and how do we react when the unexpected happens? What do we do when the chair falls over? And equally importantly, how do we want to be remembered in life? and how we reacted to the chair. Do we want to be remembered as the one who tripped over the chair because it was funny? Or do we want to be the one remembered for yelling and smashing the chair? Or do we want to be the one who's remembered for lamenting over the chair? It's how we deal with the unexpected in life. It's how we deal with the chair. I hope you enjoyed our conversation this week with Mike Jones, the owner of As High As I Am, and I hope you learned something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business, and we'll see you here again next week when we celebrate another small business making a big breakthrough. What did the beach tide say when it rolled in? Hmm. You look swell. Good, good, excellent, excellent. I thought it was a long time no see, but I like yours better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Something brilliant. like that. All right. Brilliant. Why did the bad dad joke teller bring a beach towel to the beach? I don't know. Because he had a very dry sense of humor. It's true. He did. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Shall we start? Sure. Okay. Welcome to Small Business Celebration and this